So here we are at the start of February and the upper Midwest has just endured a polar vortex which has brought with it some of the coldest temperatures ever recorded at the end of January. Even where I live, down in cotton growing country, we've made sure to keep a faucet running somewhere in the house to keep the pipes from freezing. Urgh. The news has been interesting too. Articles about the obnoxious cold. Articles about the impact of bitter cold upon the homeless. Articles about what the government should be doing about it? But articles about global climate change? Really? I guess that it's time for some roasted opinions. Let's do a quick review of things. When I was a kid in the 70s, the global climate narrative revolved around global cooling. Then in the late 80s, there was a shift to discussing global warming. Later, in the 90s, the phrase became global climate change. The shift in phraseology makes perfect sense to me. The 70s was also the time of the energy crisis, so naturally the greatest threat was an increased demand for energy due to protracted winters. Hence, global cooling. In the 80s, it was the hole in the ozone layer which threatened civilization, and that hole was permitting more energy to enter the climate, hence global warming. Then, with the predictions of both the 70s and the 80s proving to be less than accurate, scientists needed a new phrase that would cover all likely possibilities to avoid semantic arguments, hence global climate change. Now, before you freak out and scream, DENIER, at me, let me reassure you that I do believe that the climate is shifting about. Climate does that, which is why we have such wonderful titles as Little Ice Age, Medieval Warming Period, the Late Antique Little Ice Age, the Roman Warm Period, and Younger Dryas. Climate changes, and the observable data currently indicates that there are some shifts going on. These shifts have been rather abrupt, speaking from a holistic standpoint on climate history, at least as well as we know, because for the vast majority of the existence of Earth, we simply weren't around to observe climate directly. And for the vast majority of human existence, we weren't interested in climatology as much as we were interested in weather. Not climate, as in, I think that the gradual warming of the Earth is going to bring about the end of mammoth hunting, but weather, as in, let's wait until tomorrow to hunt that mammoth when it stops raining. In the last couple centuries, since the Enlightenment especially, the science of climatology has been developed. We've been recording observations more closely, and we've learned to track many more types of data in association with climate as we have learned which things actually affect climate. So, you must agree that the science is settled then, Roast? Um, no. Just, no. Science is a method for observing and documenting processes, folks. A process, by definition, cannot be settled. The data sets with which scientists are working are incomplete. We know this because of several things. First, climate is a hyper-complex system with numerous inputs which we barely understand. Second, we are still discovering those inputs, which means that we don't have comprehensive data sets for them. Not even from the Holocene era in which we currently live. Third, we simply cannot reconstruct all of the data sets from the fossil record or from ice cores or from any other source that we can access. I can illustrate this easily. That polar vortex that we just experienced? If we had complete data, then we could have predicted it far enough in advance that we could have prepared much better for it. People died in this weather event. The same can be said for heat waves during the summer hurricanes and tropical storms, tornadoes, and many other weather events. If climate was simple, we could better predict all of these things and save lives. If we could make those predictions, why wouldn't we? So here's my answer to the articles. Obnoxious cold happens sometimes, just like sweltering heat. Planning for the weather is part of being an adult. The homeless suffer from a lack of shelter. That doesn't end just because the weather moderates. If you really care about helping the homeless, then help them when the weather is pleasant. The government does respond to emergencies. That's part of its duties. The government is not responsible for solving every problem in your life, though. There simply isn't enough money or resources to solve every problem. 
The government could and should encourage proper stewardship of the environment, but it should not try to re-engineer society or the economy. That's not a free market or a free society, and it's certainly not a solution to global climate change. I understand the concern about global climate change, but listen carefully. The climate changes. It always has, according to the data that has been collected by climatologists, and it always will. Assuming that human activity has such an impact that it will destroy life on the planet is ridiculous. If we could really do this, then we would have exceeded global carrying capacity. And we know that we haven't done that because the global population is still expanding. Exceeding carrying capacity would create global famines and population reduction, folks. Ask a climatologist or Google the Little Ice Age if you don't believe me. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.